In this video, we are going to be making keywords in our text automatically style itself. So in our test dialog, you'll notice that I changed my script to just be two lines, the first being friend stop for Ricky, the second being Ricky very hungry and Ricky sleepy. So to do this, we'll go back to our visual novel library and slightly modify our two target text function. You'll notice that our sequence node actually has one of these pins unconnected to anything. This was intentional. However, I did uh, leave the wrong one unconnected. This should be going into our close all tags and our then2 is going to be where we set up this functionality. So let me break this connection. And basically what we're going to be doing here, let me show you. This is what we start with, uh, actually without the quotes. When we pass in our text and then we add our opening tag, um, normal. and normal. Then we add the quotes and now before every Ricky we need to add the red tag. Red and red. That's what we're going to be trying to accomplish first. It's going to actually have some problems but we'll deal with those as they come up. So how should we do this? Well what we're going to do is we're going to split our process string into an array of strings based on the space bars in between them. To do that, we can use parse to array, parse into array. And the delimiter in here is automatically, the default um, delimiter is a space bar. So we're going to um, save this variable as a, let's call this words. This is going to be a string array. We're going to set our words. Set our words, sorry. And what this function does, parse into array, is it says, hey, every time we see a spacebar, create a new um, string and add that, to, add that to our array. So what this will return is friends stop for Ricky. And we're going to go through each of these words, find out if one of these is a keyword, and if it is, we're going to add that tag before it. So how do we know which is a keyword and which is, um, well, not, and also which tag goes with that keyword? To do that, we can just create a new local uh, variable. We'll call this keywords uh, styles, sure. And this is going to be a string map or dictionary and the value is also going to be a string. So I'm going to compile, save this, add a value to our keyword styles, and the word is going to be Ricky, and the style for it is going to be red. So let's do this, we'll go through each, uh, also we have to set our process string to be nothing, because what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to rebuild our process string from these words. So after we set a process string and nothing, we're going to go through each of the words. So get words for each loop. And we're going to save the array element as our, um, let's call it current string. This is going to be a single variable because we're going to have a lot of lines looping off this array element and I'd rather just save this as a variable to save some, well, to save it from looking too messy. And we'll say if our keyword styles find can find the current string that would be this uh, red one underneath this, on the right side of this branch then we'll do something. Otherwise, it's not a keyword, therefore we'll just add it back to our array as normal, so, or back to our process string as normal. So we're going to get our process string, append our current string, and set our process string as that. So set process string. 
This is if the word is not a keyword. So we'll just add it back to our process string as normal over here. However, if it is a keyword, we will get our process string append. And this time we will first append our um, text style that we found for that keyword first, followed by that followed by our current string. And set our process string to be equal to this in the true. So let's compile, save, and play, see what happens. You'll notice there's a couple of problems. First off, our space bars are gone. That's a really easy problem to fix. But also, Ricky is not in red. However, if we go to the next line, you'll notice that we still have no space bars, but Ricky is in red, but the rest of the line is also in red. So let's first solve the issue of our space bars. To do that, it's pretty simple. We can just go to our pens and add a space bar to the end of them. Compile, save, press play. We have our space bars back, and Sleepy is still in red. So why is that? Well, that's because if we go to our Sleepy right here, this is what we end up with, red. And it thinks that the rest of the line is still going to be red because we didn't add whatever um, textile it was supposed to be, or it changed from after Ricky to change it change the rest of the line back to it. So first we need to find out what our textile was before we changed our word to our current um, te textile. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble speaking right now. To do that, we can just say if our current string starts with the less than sign, meaning it starts with a textile, French Then we'll do something. Otherwise, we'll just move on to our um, setting our strings over here as normal. So we need another variable. This is going to be our last text style. And if our string starts with a text style, we will just simply set our last text style to be whatever it is. So we will get our current string, find the end of our text style add one to it, and get substring with that length. And then we will move on to our branch again. And at the end of setting our um, textile for our keywords, we will add the current textile or current um, last textile, I mean. Compile, save, and play again. Let's see if this works. Next line. Now Ricky is the only one in red, and Sleepy and the rest of it is still in black. All right. Why is, let's hit play again. Why is this Ricky not in red? That's because this Ricky I mean, that's because when we split our um, string into an array, what we're getting is this Ricky over here with the period at the end, also this quote at the end. And our keyword styles doesn't have a, a key for that. It only has a key for Ricky without the quote and periods. To fix this, we could just, let me stop this, we could just add more you know, variants of Ricky into here, you know, Ricky plus a period, Ricky plus quotes and stuff like that. Let me remove this. But that would be a pain, especially if you have, if you have a lot of values that you need to deal with. I mean, a lot of um, keywords that you would have to deal with. You would have to add a lot of extra keywords just to make up for those. So instead of what we're going to do is we're going to get our, key, our current string, I mean, and we're going to say, hey, just remove all the um, all the other stuff around our or your word and see if that word is a keyword. Is there a remove? No. So we're going to do replace and we're going to replace our period with nothing. We're going to see we're going to do the same thing with question mark. 
and well a lot of other stuff so replace um, quote replace comma we have period question mark we need exclamation point as well and replace um, shoot I could have sworn I had one more uh, regular quote the or single single quote and instead of finding our current string in our keyword styles we are going to find this after replacing all the other characters with nothing but our string so we try and play this now friends software Ricky now Ricky is in red but so is the period and the quote and the next Ricky at the beginning of the line is not in red so let's fix the issue with the period and quote still being in red um, the reason for that is because in our append we're just adding our current string back into here as if it's all good instead what we need to do is we need to split it so get our current string we're gonna split with our keyword what this is gonna do is let's take this rookie for example or it would actually have a quote at the end The left of our split is going to be, well, nothing, because there's nothing left of this Ricky. And the right of it is going to be our period and quote. So let's actually rebuild this array because it's going to get distracting working with it. Process string append. So after we append a process string, we need to add the left string of our um, current string because that text style is still going to be the same as um, the rest of the line before it. For example, if there was a question mark here, our left would be that question mark. So we will want that question mark to still be the same text style, so we add it directly after this process string. After that, we add our um, text style we found from our keyword styles. Then we add the keyword we found, so that would be this one over here, followed by the last text style, because we want to go back to whatever it used to be, followed be by the right of that string, in that case it would be the period and quote, followed by the spacebar and plug this into process string. Compile, save, play again. Now friends stop our Ricky and the period and the quote are not in red. Finally we have to solve the issue of this Ricky not being in red. The reason that's happening is because our split string is returning as the first string. Copy this over here. And by replacing our quotes with nothing, we still have this. And this tag is getting in the way of finding our um, our keywords in here. So how are we going to fix this? Well, after we find our um, last text style, what we can do is we can just say, tell our, we're going to tell our current string, hey, we found our last text. We found our last text style so we don't care about it anymore so we can tell our current string um, get current string and we're going to tell it just get rid of it so right chop our text style and set our current string as this move that into the branch and if we hit play again you'll notice that our first line is messed up, it just says Ricky and the second line is still slightly messed up, the quote is gone uh... why is that? that is because back in here what we did is we said hey 
first um, first array element, get rid of this normal. So it got rid of the normal. Now there is no opening tag in our text. So it just waits until it finally finds an opening tag, which would be over here, where we insert the red. Sorry, not opening tag, um, style tag. So that's why the first line was only printing the red. So after we set our last text style, let's tell our process string to add that um, append, to add that text style because we know that it needs to be there anyways. Is that process string over here? Like that. Compile, play, first line is fixed now, and so is the second line. Everything works now. If we add some more rickies in here, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Compile, save, and play. These rookies are now all in red. Um, if we look at the string we actually get, however, there will be a lot of. It'll end up looking like this. Here, uh, let me show you. It'll end up looking like normal Ricky or red. Ricky normal. It would end up looking like that. There was a, there would be a lot of unnecessary normals in here, and that's because we just automatically assume we should add it at the end of our um, append over here. But that's kind of a pain to get rid of, and it doesn't really harm the typing out of the text at all. So there's. Really, nope. It's not worth the effort to get rid of it, in my opinion, honestly. But yeah, that's how we would automatically color words a certain way if we want to. If we wanted to add more words to here, we just go to our keyword styles, add another keyword in here, and it would make it would automatically color itself. So, oh, uh, what was the other word in here? It was. Let's go with hungry. Hungry should be should be red compile save play and hungry is red now should also be noted that this is not case sensitive when um, the keyword styles finds our string it doesn't look to see if if it's if the first letter is capitalized or not capitalized for example so if you wanted hungry in here um, you would also have to include the capital hungry, so capital H, hungry, and red. But it's not that big a deal, honestly. Um, it's just two for every word, and most words that you want to have automatically styled are probably names that would automatically have the first level capitalized anyways. So yeah, that'll do it for this video. I'm going to clean this up a little bit because it's very messy. But hopefully you were able to follow along despite that.